So now let's look at capacitance for different layers in the CMOS technology. So we start with the capacitance for metal 2 layer which is typically used for the wires. So if you were to put in the width versus the capacitance, so if you increase the width because C equals to epsilon A over D and the area is actually the width times the length, right? So if you increase A or you increase the width to the capacitance will increase. So this is uh, some data of actual fabricated metal tool layers. So the wires actually have capacitance of 0.2 femtofarad per micrometer and this is much lower than the capacitance of a transistor or the gate capacitance which amounts to 2 femtofarad. So where are the other capacitances? So as you know, in the transistor, we have the transistor here. This is NMOS. This is the gate. So if we were to draw the layout, right, this point is the diffusion and this is the resistor. So you have different layers here. This is poly, silicon and this is diffusion. We saw in the resistance, the diffusion, both the diffusion and the polysilicon have high resistance. So also in the capacitance, diffusion capacitance is very high, about 2 femtofarad per micrometer. So this is comparable to the gate capacitance, capacitance here, and the diffusion also has high resistance. So we do not run wires using diffusion. Usually we run wires only using metal. Polysilicon has lower capacitance but still very high R. So we only use polysilicon as transistor gates and we do not use it to run wires unless the wires are very very short. So we can replace each wire also using the lump element model. The lump element model means that you are replacing a single wire into a resistor and capacitor just to fit the RC delay. So the RC delay is present for transistors and also wires. So this is the example. So the wires are a distributed system. So you can have one RC model for one wire and if you have more wires you can put them together so you can have more segments connected together right so it can be as an L model where you connect the R directly to the C or the pi model where the R is in the middle and it is sandwiched between two capacitors or the T model where the capacitance is in the middle and the resistance are side by side. So these are the three lump element model. So the three segment pi model is accurate to 3% in simulation. So this is the most accurate model whereas the L model needs 100 segments to achieve the same accuracy. So we use also the single segment Mod pi model for L moduli. Let's look at an example. This example shows that metal 2 wire in a 180 nanometer process, it is 5 millimeters long and 0.32 meter wide. So this is 0.3 meter wide and 0.32 meter wide micrometer and this length is 5 mm so in order to construct the construct the three pi three segment pi model 
the sheet resistance is 0 0.05 ohm per square so if you have 5 millimeter long to multiply each square by 0 0.05 so you can get 781 ohm and the capacitance per micron is 0 0.2 femtofarad per micrometer so if you have 5 millimeters so you just multiply this by 5 and you can get 1 picofarad so if we want to calculate the resistance so R equals to R square L over W so here we can just multiply L square is equals to 0 0.05 multiplied by the length which is 5 mm divided by 0 0.32 times 10 to the minus 6 so if you multiply this you can get R equals to 7810 okay so now let's look at another example this is for the wire RC delay. Estimate the delay of a 10 times inverter driving a 2 times inverter at the end of a 5 mm wire from the previous example. So, from the previous example, you have R equals to 2.5 kilo ohm per micron for the gates and the unit inventor for the 0 0.36 micrometer NMOS and 0 0.72 micrometer PMOS so the previous R that we found R equals to 781 ohm here and for the pi model you have um, picofarad so the model actually is the R is in the middle and the C here is C over 2 and C over 2 so if you have R equal to 781 and C equals to 1 picofarad so each C over 2 here is 500 femto times 500 femto okay so the driver has um, 690 ohm and the load is 4 femtofarad so the propagational delay we can calculate by using the formula propagational delay equals to RC so we have to break the second into segments here is the first segment first segment is the R is 690 times 500 femtofarad and the next segment is we have to add in the two resistors 690 times 781 multiply the, by the capacitors at the other end at the load so you can multiply them and you can get for the first segment it is 345 picosecond and for the second segment is 741 picosecond which will total to 1 point in one problem of the wires <coughs> is that it creates crosstalk the crosstalk is present when there are two wires side by side here so this the signal in the first wire can affect with the second wire so this is because between the two wires there con exists a capacitor and this capacitance causes the voltage at the second capacitor V2 is affected by the voltage at the first wire so a capacitor does not like to change its voltage instantaneously so the wire this causes the wire to have high capacitance to its neighbor so when the neighbor switches from 1 to 0 or from 0 to 1 
the adjacent wire or the wire beside it also tends to switch to this is known as capacitive coupling or crosstalk this crosstalk creates noises uh, in a non-switching wire so if only this wire is switching because of the proximity it will also cause noise to the nearby wire and this will create increased delay on the switching wires so let's look at crosstalk delay assume the layers above and below on the average are quiet and the second terminal of the capacitor can be ignored so here you can see that between two wires A and B there are three capacitance the adjacent capacitance and the capacitance between the wire and ground okay so this can be modeled as the ground capacitance can be modeled as the top capacitance plus the bottom capacitance so the effect of the adjacent capacitance depends on the behavior of the neighbors so if this one is switching quickly so this will also be affected see here so if b is constant at vdd c effective is um, c ground plus c adjacent if a is switching the c effect is, is 3 gr c ground and if the switching is at b the uh, effective capacitance is actually c ground and 2 c adjacent crosstalk noise crosstalk causes functional voltage noise on non-switching wires and if the victim is floating which means the vi victim so the wires are divided into two types which is the aggressor where the signal is passing through this is known as the aggressor and the next wire beside it which has no signal is known as the victim so if the victim is not connected to VDD ground it is known as it is floating so you can calculate the voltage at the victim by connecting it in this method so it is C adjacent here and between the victim and ground this is C ground so you can make it into this model here C adjacent in series with C ground and you can calculate the voltage at the victim so you can use a voltage divider model where if you want to know the voltage here you you multiply by C adjacent divide that by this plus this so since it's a capacitor you use the opposite value not the voltage here 